guys, welcome back to my Let's Play of This is the Police. This is episode six. My name's Babs. Let's get right into this. Let's read these headlines here. City Treasury doles out 90,000 for Mayor's birthday. Holy crap. What a waste of money. Mysterious Rob Robespierre announces political ambition. So Robespierre was that guy um, that put all those flyers in the cutscene of last episode. So he's like a, some notorious, um, I don't know if you'd really call him a criminal because what he's doing isn't really hurting anybody. He's just kind of a nuisance, but um, yeah. Uh, six new restaurants to appear in city by a year's end. Cool, good for them. Go to work. Third time's a charm, you got it, Frank. Oh, clutch. Didn't think he had it that time. Oh, that's right. We're doing the psych test today. Oh, you guys tuned in on the right episode. This is going to be a good one because I am all messed up in my head. Dr. Eleanor Waterbury. Mr. Boyd, this is maybe I'll learn something today about myself. Mr. Boyd, this is a very simple test. I'll show you a card with an abstract image. You just look at them and tell me what you see. Murder. I see murder. I see a man coughing up his own blood. No, I see a man coughing up his blood into someone else's hand. Flying severed heads. Um, well, I mean, I guess I see a man taking a handful of tablets in the barn. That does refer to Frank because he did take pills in his barn. So I guess I'm not going to learn anything about myself because what I see is a man coughing up his own blood into someone else's hand. I've already told you guys. Looks like a man walking through a doorway. Um, a very large man, man with um, very sharp kneecaps and knee pit walking through a doorway. A uh, man going back to his house. Yeah, a butterfly, a man with a clock for a face. Man going back to his house. What do you see here? It looks like to me that someone pooped blood. Um, and now they're going to put it on someone else's head like it is some type of festive hat or also possibly a woman decorating a Christmas tree with one black hand and one tan hand. A blue alien raping a pig, a dancing girl, a woman decorating a Christmas tree. Well, there's no blue in this picture whatsoever. So I guess if you picked a blue alien raping a pig, um, they might say uh, you're colorblind. You guys like how I just glanced over the whole raping bit? This looks like someone, um, you know how people will use their hands to kind of show the size of something? This looks like somebody saying it's it's about yay big over a yellow rubber ducky, only the rubber ducky is present and not fictional, and they are slightly off on their assessment of how large it is. A man giving a woman a Christmas ornament, a tower on a hill, a baby with spider legs. So a man giving a woman a Christmas present. So is this about Frank and his wife? Cause um, she left him. And I guess, okay. So this is some abstract way of letting the, the player know what happened to Frank and his wife. A man giving a woman a Christmas ornament. So this to me looks like, again, a rubber ducky dangling from a string on a person that's kind of trying to do a shadow puppet of a swan, only there's no light source, so there's no shadow. Also, there's some type of red mountain in the background, and there is a, this is a man with huge uh, boobs with slightly erect, looking at the rubber ducky dangling from a string. The woman dropping the Christmas ornament, an automobile accident, a tree that's growing human uh, lungs. <clears throat> that's a pretty good one. A woman dropping the Christmas ornament. 
This to me looks like some abstract art that's casting a red shadow of itself. Or no, this looks like a uh, Transformers mask. Um, don't know if you guys have seen Immortal HD's videos, but that's what that reminds me of his uh, his his uh, song uh, Pogs Pogs for Life. What is it? No knobs Knobs for Life. That's what that reminds me of. Pieces of Christmas ornament all over the floor. An ice cream cone. Marching hammers. Pieces of Christmas ornament all over the floor. Okay, fair enough. This to me looks like um, the Marvel super villain or anti hero Venom featuring uh, Tom Hardy sticking his tongue into the top of an abstract painting of a shed on a rock on the beach. Uh, the man yelling at the woman, a chess rook, a man with the head of a rhinoceros, uh, the man yelling at a woman, at the woman for dropping the ornament. So this to me looks like a snake with a bent neck slamming into the side of someone's face. And this would be its eyeball right here. And this would be, uh, the artist must have overlooked that. Uh, the woman slapping the man, an overturned truck, a huge hedgehog eating people instead of apples. <laughs> the woman slapping the man. So this to me looks like One Punch Man slamming a yellow abstract figure of a person into a red rock with such force that the blood from the victim is spraying outward through One Punch Man's hand that looks like a hoof. The man pushing the woman, a key on a chain, an octopus playing the piano. The man pushing the woman. This to me looks like a yellow figure laying on a massage chair that's two times too big for them while the shadow of another figure with very burly shoulders stares over them wondering why they don't get a massage chair that's the appropriate size for their figure. The woman falling over with the Christmas tree, a pile of autumn leaves, a woman in a warm, warm, worm skin coat. <laughs> Gross. The woman falling over the Christmas tree. All right. Thank you for your time, Mr. Boyd. I will inform you about the test results in the coming days. I'm excited to see how I did. Checkpoint. Day nine. Oh, that's it? All right. Well, I'm not going to end the episode there. <laughs> so I didn't even go to work that day. So I guess we'll just uh, do uh, do the next day. Um, oh, I was going to tell you guys. I got some... Um, they're called aroma diffusers. So in my stalker let's plays, if you've seen those, I always talk about burning incense. I like to do that, but also I just got um, some aroma diffusers, two of them for my house. Uh, they take the, the oil and you fill them with water and you do some drips of oil in them and then they run. My house, I found these, I found oils for them um, that are called like the gentleman's collection and they got really cool smells. So the one I'm using right now is actually a leather smell and it smells pretty darn good. Not gonna lie, I'm really digging it. Uh, I also got cedar, um, I got sandalwood. Um, uh, there's one that's like rum and coconut and I don't, I don't know why I'm looking back at them like I can actually read how, they're so far away there's no way I could read them but yeah pretty cool um I still like the incense too but I don't know I, I feel like you guys I should share that I don't know why 
This is why I don't have any subscribers. Please sub. Uh, Shia Broom re-elected as Freeburg General Attorney. Shia Broom. No black employees at City Hall. Mayor says, accident. Yeah, big accident. Mayor's racist. Oops. Major businessman ready to invest in the future of the city. Major businessman. Hmm. I wonder who that is. Or men. Multiple. All right, let's go to work. Third time's the charm. Clutch. Honestly, Birch, I was going to give you the day off, my man. You're a trooper, though, Birch. Wait, why is he here? He just worked. Oh, because shift B didn't work because I was getting the psych uh, psychiatric test. Um, yeah, you can go home. Austin, I drank too much. I don't think I can hold it together today. Can I go home? Hmm. I don't like that. Yeah, but you're coming tomorrow. You're working a double shift. Oh, I got a stripe. Oh, who'd we give it to? Stovall. Oh, I kind of want to give it to Grant. But also, Hernk. What's... Can I... Uh, it sucks. I wish I could click on them and look at uh, there's how many successful missions they've had. Hmm. Robbins has been good too. Grant, Grant's Grant's a a wild card. She's been awesome, but she's also I think she's asked for days off, and she's failed some missions. I was really expecting her not to fail. We'll give this one to Robbins. There you go, Robbins. You know what? Instead of firing you, I'm going to give you a promotion because you're a genuinely great cop. How about that, City Hall? What you going to do about it, huh? Come at me. Let's listen to our Beethoven. <clears throat> Performed by Mosapin Symphony. Sounds good. Let's see what we've got cooking in the oven here. A few months ago, an unregistered feminist organization appeared in Freeburg. Today, they're holding their first protest. As far as we know, the organization is backed by foreign sponsors and their goal is to get their people into important positions in City Hall. The protest may escalate into something more serious and we, we need to show them who's in charge. Use batons and tear gas, even firearms if necessary. What? Let's show them what intimidation looks like up close and personal. Holy crap, no, screw you, City Hall. Holy crap. That is corrupt. I'm looking the other way on criminals here, feeling bad about me. They're doing this crap. Let us be successful. Okay, what's wrong with that? Send SWAT? Tell you what, Birch Jr., can I just send him? I'm not doing it, like, I'm not sending SWAT to this until, unless it gets out of hand, then I'll send SWAT. But so you don't just go in assuming, I mean, they're allowed to protest, that's fine. <laughs> that's their right. Unless I'm in some fictitious country. I think Freeburg is a fictitious town. Um, well, I can't send, um, sorry, don't have the manpower. Yes. What are you going to do about it? Jack, you swore an oath to serve the city. If you can't keep your promises, we won't keep ours. Go ahead. I don't care. I'm retiring. Be the change you want to see, guys. Be the change you want to see. Hostage situation. Johnson, Horgan, and Cotts Law Firm. A dissatisfied client entered some law offices with a pistol, took several employees hostage, and demanded a meeting with the firm's partners. These, sh oh, I'm not saying that. Took me for a ride. They sucked up all my money and my son still went to jail. So I can send SWAT here. So it's, I think this is a much more appropriate situation for SWAT than a, what appeared to be peaceful protest. Let's send Stovall. Um, we'll go ahead and send Grant. Uh, I'll leave Robbins and Vandal here, and we'll also send Birch Jr. All right, guys. Make me proud. Woo, 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 
whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, shoot. I got tons of messages. Oh, I got the from the doctor. Uh, Mr. Boyd, your psych is in good shape. My only concern is your stress level. My research shows that Beethoven's music soothes and relaxes the nervous system. I recommend you invest in a bit of good old Ludwig von... Lud Ludwig von... It will help my, uh, with any violent urges you might be feeling. Well, you know what? I already did that. I guess that I'm the doctor now, Mrs. Eleanor. Uh, Crystal McCoy. All right. She died. Why did that have to remind me? I have to pause the recording. Take a moment. Okay, I'm back. Miss McCoy was an amazing cop. Um, she died tragically in a car accident driving to the scene of, I think, was a convenience store robbery or something of that nature. And she crashed into an antelope or possibly a gazelle. We couldn't tell. Their, the remains were so mangled that we couldn't piece it back together. But she was a wonderful cop. A, a mother of three beautiful uh, children, and she will be missed. Sorry, McCoy. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for you. You are always there for me. All right, City Hall. Tomorrow is the deadline. Eliminate the Red Mask Gang. Oh, shoot. Oh, I need more cards. Wait, am I supposed to be doing something? Mafia assignment from Christopher G. Sand. Jack, we have something going down today at Ruben Rubinovich Casino at 1240. I have to remember that because I can't look back. I'm going to write it down. 1240. Got it. Um, we wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think $8,000 should be enough for such a request. Okay, before I continue, before I hit close and the clock starts counting down, what do they mean it's the deadline for this investigation? Because I pretty much have no control over how fast I get these cards back. Unless I mess something up. Let's look at it. Details. Maybe I should have put more detectives on the job. Because, I mean, I'll try this again. No, that didn't work. I'll try this. Because, like, he already had a key. So why would he need a crowbar? I don't know. I need more cards. Unless that's the safe. And he pried open the safe. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, oh, I can't move that one. I can only move these three, so. Shoot, I hope they find another card today. Can I put more detectives on this? Oh, I can. Let's put some more on here. Oh, uh, I might have messed up. I probably should have put more detectives on this. The days that get, I might mess this one up. That sucks. I didn't realize that. So the, the amount, the cards that you get that is determined by how many investigators. What's this? The cinema, arson, the last picture show theater. What's storming? A young woman set fire to the movie theater during a show and fled. Oh, this is a new investigation. Oh, I just put all my investigators on. Mm. I, need, I almost need to hire another investigator. All right, well, we'll let them get started. As soon as the other one's done, I'll throw some more investigators on that. Uh, we got her done. Oh, good, good, good. We did it. Nice. Wow, it's really stormy. This is the first time it's actually, like, stormed like this. Pretty cool. All right, here comes the sand thing. I have it right here. 1240, written on my desk. Robbery. 
Oh, right, that they're robbing the casino. A dealer at the casino called the police after a man entered the place carrying a grenade. He threw a duffel bag onto the floor and demanded that it be filled with money. Oh, man, I don't know. Why, are the, why do you need to rob the casino? Why do you have to rob other, what? Okay, I don't know if I can let this one slide. This might get me and my family killed, but I feel like I have an obligation to do something about this. But I think I might also die because of it and he might kill my family. Let me weigh my options. I don't send anybody. The casino gets robbed. I'm not too concerned about that. But I'm worried about this guy having a grenade. And, and killing a bunch of people. This is like terrorism if that grenade goes off. But if I send somebody, they might use the grenade. Whereas if I don't send anybody, they don't use the grenade. I don't really want to help the mafia. I'm wondering if maybe I, maybe I do send somebody here. I catch these guys. Maybe I can start an investigation on sand. That'd be great. But I just don't know if that's gonna, what's gonna happen. All right, be the change you wanna see guys. My heart is racing right now. I'm sending all my best guys. Probably all gonna die and I'm gonna have to restart. Be the change you want to see, guys. Hashtag put it in the comments. Be the change. I'm shaking. All right, we got this. We got some. We don't have any frames. The incident occurred during the screening of Jim Jarmusch's film Stranger Than Paradise. The screen is ruined. The members of the audience suffered minor injuries in the panic, but fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. Jersey Coddle Usher. I remember a girl with bright red hair. I sold her a ticket after the show, after the show started. Although I usually don't do that, but she was really, really nice. I noticed a bottle in her hand, but I thought it was a soda. I wouldn't think such a pretty young lady would come to the movies with anything hard. With anything hard? Okay. I sat in the last row. A few minutes after the film started, I heard someone enter the room and slam the door. I was going to say something, but because I don't like it when someone distracts me from Jarmusch's vision. Then I saw a flash of fire and a flaming bottle flew straight at the screen. They threw a molly at it. Uh, Pavel Kachi, theater visitor. When the screen caught on fire, I thought it must be part of the show. You know what I, you know what I heard? That Jim Jarmusch guy is from a nut house. Okay. When the fire started, I immediately started looking around for a way out. And that's when I spotted her, the red-headed fool. She ran away quickly. There wasn't time to do anything. So we don't have any um, frames. So I can't really do anything, but we read through our witness testimonies so that we will remember what's going on for next time. Now let's get back on this sand thing and see what happens. What's this? Mr. Boyd. Today we're installing a new slot machine called Super Magdalene 3. The last time we put in a new one, one of the bigger kids almost broke it the first day. The first day. It would be great if you could send us a couple of your men to keep the kids under control. Well, I don't care if they break your stuff. That's what insurance is for, not the police. If they try to steal it, let me know. Otherwise, deal with it yourself. Like, all right, here we go. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I made the right decision. Patches, what if happens if I just die right here? I fail the game. What do I do? Do I restart the episode? Or do I just end this let's play? Move on to the next game. Either way, I'm screwed. The only way this works out is if I'm right, I get to start an investigation in the stand, but I literally don't think that I can do that because I never get what I want, Patches. All right, 
answer me. The situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. All right, it's gonna take everyone. I think I'd leave Grant here to hold down the fort, but I really want to catch these guys. But I, I feel like it'd be negligent for me to not have any cops on duty. Because that would literally be my entire force. They have SWAT. All right, I sent Herc. Help him out, Herc. All eyes on you, Herc. Be the change. Be the change. Be the change. This is that arcade thing. I'm not doing it. St. John's Hospital. Suspicious individual, St. John's Hospital. A pregnant girl called in a report on a sus suspicious gyne gynecologist who she met in reception. The doctor was behaving very strangely and attempted to persuade the girl to have an abortion. Though she was already five months pregnant, through streaming tears, she explained, the doctor said that for only $10,000, he would save me from the parasite inside my body. Oh my gosh. I'll send Grant in. That's messed up. Call it a, a parasite inside your body? Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, I thought people were going to die. Oh, Herc. Herc, Herc, Herc. Next Chevron, buddy. I'm right your name right down here on my desk. Herc. And when I, uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go get a tattoo of your name on my uh, thigh. Whew. Oh, he's disappointed. Let's see what happens. Jack, we don't know why you did it. We hope you had a good reason. Don't forget who your friends are. We don't want any more trouble. Okay. All right. That doesn't seem too bad, actually, all things considered. I'd really love to open an investigation on him. I really would. Doesn't look like I get to right now. Hashtag be the change. Disorderly conduct in the ghetto. Housewife Takara Montez often complains to the police about her neighbors. They're constantly making a racket and often get into fights, always refusing to discuss things with their neighbors. She's called the police again today after hearing loud bangs in the apartment, along with loud screams. According to her, about six or seven people live in there. Loud bangs and screams? But she's constantly calling the police department. And she's constantly, she says they're always making a racket and often get into fights. Huh. Well, I don't have any cops right now. So, but I don't feel like, I feel like that she, this might be a false alarm. But I would like to send at least one cop, but I literally don't have any yet. I got 20 seconds. I'll have some here in a second. Officer on scene. Suspicious Looks individual. Like oh, right. The doctor. The doctor spots the police. Grabs a scalpel and bold, boldly shouts, come on, I'll release your soul from this filthy world. Hit him with a taser, use pepper spray, attempt to restrain the doctor. The doctor spots the police, grabs a scalpel and boldly shouts, come on, I'll release your soul from this filthy world. So I don't want to attempt to restrain him because I don't want my officer to get cut. Um, I don't see how pepper spray is going to do anything here. Well, maybe. I can also hit him with a taser. I wish we could, I wish there was an option for me to talk, talk to him. Cause all of these are physical answers. He's not coming at me. He seems to be maybe to have some mental issues of some sort, possibly. I don't want to hit him with a taser. I don't want my officer to get hurt. I mean, he has a weapon, right? Scalpel is a weapon. It's basically a knife. And that could do some real damage. I mean, it's used for cutting people open. So I don't want to just attempt to restrain the doctor. I also don't want to tase him or use pepper spray yet. I feel like these are the situation hasn't quite escalated enough to the point where I'm justified using pepper spray or a taser. 
This kind of sucks that these are my only options. Well, I can't do anything about that, so... So we hit him with pepper spray, all right? What happens? Um, sucks for him. His eyes burn. He might cut himself. I hit him with a taser. Probably drop to the ground. Probably drop the scalpel. Everything will be all right. Now, tasers are a less than lethal to device, but that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. You shouldn't... Cops shouldn't just tase people. But in this situation, it's my only option. I think given between these three, using the taser is my best option. Right, we caught him. Officer unharmed. And I'm assuming he was unharmed. Good. Okay. I feel better about it then. What's this? All right. Uh, she's the one complaining about her neighbors. Let's send two cops there. We'll send Birch Jr. Trying to rank him up. And uh, we'll send... I don't want anybody... Let's send Robbins. We just gave him a stripe. See how he does. Oh. Jack. We're about to bring in a large shipment of alcohol, but we've heard that our new partners like to play tough. We need a couple of your guys for insurance. No. No, dude. I feel like nobody appreciates what I do. Nobody appreciates me and my force. We're cops. We're cops, damn it. We're not your, we're not your handymen. We're not your guns for hire. We are the police. This is the police. Hashtag be the change, Babs. Refuse. That's okay, Patches. It's theatrics. It's all theatrics. I'm not really upset. <sighs> what was this? All right, I decided not to do that because I'm not your gun for high. I'm not your handyman. All right, what do we got? Oh, oh, okay. So she's not pulling our strings. The situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. Well, we'll send in Herc. Herc hasn't been impressing me, and we'll send in Grant. Make me proud, boys and girls. What's this? What? Rape! True Caller Hotel. A call came in from a hotel occupant who was concerned about the cries of a woman in an adjoining room. Sounds to me like someone is being raped, said the frightened elderly woman. Okay. Okay. Well, I only got two guys, but I got, they're my best guys. I could send my two best guys to this, but it's an elderly woman says it sounds like someone's being raped. So we'll see. See what happens. Fingers crossed that it's not and that it's a false alarm. Hopefully that's all it is. I haven't had any of my investigations. Oh, is this the investigation? <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, I haven't gotten any cards for my investigations so right as this popped up. Um, you got three new frames. All right, let's see. So, okay. So I remember our uh, witnesses, testimonies. They said a lady with red hair came in and threw. So this looks like a flamethrower. She threw a Molotov, right? That's at least one person said she threw a Molotov. This is so she didn't use a flamethrower. So this is her boarding up the doors. I don't remember anybody saying anything about her boarding up the doors either. Nobody was seriously hurt. So this would be her running away with smoke coming out the doors. I think this might be the only frame that's actually used. She definitely didn't use a flamethrower. I, even if I somebody didn't say that she used a Molotov, I don't think I'd believe that she brought a flamethrower and they let somehow a flamethrower. Nobody happened to see the flamethrower. Uh, that also the um, the employee said that she she had a bottle and she thought it was a soda. So she definitely had a Molly and nobody said anything about they couldn't get out. Right. Um, let's see, I want to see a pretty young lady. Uh, uh, jump through these real quick and then I saw a flash of fire flaming bottle at the screen uh screen cover uh, you know what I heard there's the guys at nutshell right here, away. Uh, 
yeah, nobody said anything about the doors being locked shut. So that's all we have right now. Uh, receive stolen property from Detective Mole. Oh, we got new frames. We're going to do it. Oh, today's the deadline. Open investigation. All right. Oh, oh, shoot. Okay. Well, he, this is him in the safe. Okay, I gotta read through this again. It's literally been a week and a half. Niki is a faithful assistant, Jin Yang, a founding member of the gang. He's entrusted with the most serious jobs. He keeps his more valuable prizes at home while he arranges their sale. He then brings them to the Wise Dragon restaurant on the day before he planning to make a deal. The gang must have had an immediate buyer for the necklace, so Niki brought it to the restaurant the same night it was stolen. Usually the restaurant is open around the clock, but it was closed that night before because an important deal was going down. Niki has a key to the restaurant. Valuables are kept in a safe under the bar. So all I know would be this. Oh, we got it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, Niki, a Chinese immigrant, hasn't officially worked anywhere for the last 10 years. So we got our suspect. I'm glad I threw Beasley on that. What's this? Receiving stolen property. All right. A year ago, Ning became owner of the house. The home was listed as a gift on his tax return. Oh, we're going to go catch him. Oh, no. I don't have anybody available right now. It looks like I got some time. Let's check this out. All right, we got it. Don't know what happened there. Um, they just said there were loud noises. They never told me what actually happened. Oh, well, I'll read the report. Looks like we have a situation here. All right, True Collar Hotel. This is the, the rape situation here. The door to one of the rooms on the second floor is standing ajar. And through it can be seen a large man holding a crying girl by the neck. He's striking her in the face and shouting, shut up, you whore. I paid... I paid to you. Now keep quiet. Oh my gosh. Let the woman go or you're dead. Strike the man in the knees. Point a gun at the man. Oh my gosh. I was really hoping that this was a false report. That sucks. Strike the man in the knees. No. Let the woman go. You're dead. I don't know. He should be, we should, the cops should be shooting him in this situation. We could definitely try to apprehend him. I have sent, I think, two of my best cops. We could point a gun at him. I don't want to accidentally shoot the victim. I think point the gun? No, because then he might, like, take her hostage. So the option that I'd like to be here, I think, is send my two cops in to grab the guy. Or maybe like the tase option. The tase option might not be a bad idea here or pepper spray. Because now there's a victim involved and it appears to be close by. Um, woman, go or you're dead. Strike the man in the knees. How about hands up? This is the police. That'd be a good one. <laughs> Point a gun at the man. Strike the man in the knees. I think strike the man in the knees because that's the closest thing to trying to just get in there and apprehend him. The girl managed to escape, but her pimp leads for the man leaps for the man and another fight breaks out the pimp i didn't know there's a pimp there what <laughs> uh try to separate them use pepper spray let them fight the girl managed to escape but her pimp le leaps for the man and another fight breaks out uh try to separate them use pepper spray i think use pepper spray because i don't want one of my cops getting caught up in that the man shoves the pimp away and suddenly jumps out the window jump out after him in a pursuit shoot the fleeing man in the back Run down the stairs. 
I don't think you'd shoot the guy in the back. I want to catch him. I want to catch him just as much as anybody else, but you don't shoot somebody as they're running away. You shoot somebody when your life's in danger or somebody, or they're putting somebody else's life in danger, not when they're putting their own lives in danger. Don't know how high up we are. Um, I mean, I jump out after him. I kind of like jump out after him, honestly. Uh, now, when I click this, just know and my thought process is I have, I have thought about, well, what if they're on like the, the top floor of a <laughs> skyscrapers? My thought process is that my cops are smart enough to take a look down and see if they're gonna kill themselves by jumping out or not. Uh, I'm hoping they're maybe on second floor I think this is, if I was a cop, this guy, I'm assuming this guy jumps out the window. If I make that assessment that I can jump out this window without killing myself or seriously injuring myself, I'm going to jump out this window, so. And I feel like if we click run down the stairs, he's gonna get away. So we don't want him to get away. So we're gonna jump out after him. It's Stovall, you rock! Let's go Stovall! Woo! And Vandal, Vandal was there too. We did it. Let's go. Nobody got hurt either. Awesome. That was a good one. That was very deep. Don't know where that pimp came from. He was like hiding in the shadows, apparently. All right, end of the day. Boss, I quit. I just want to spend more time with my family. Okay. So we need to hire a new cop as soon as we can. Um. Should I make Beasley work tomorrow? No, I don't think so. Why is this guy always tired? This guy never is not tired. Stovall's kicking butt as always. Um, Shift B. This guy's insane. Wait, is this my deputy? No, that was Martin Strett was my deputy. I don't know. I don't, I guess I hired this guy. I haven't really gotten to put him on a case yet. And she quits. Um, okay. Nothing I can really do here. All right, guys. Well, thanks for checking out this episode. This was a longer episode. Um, it was a good one though. This is probably one of the best episodes yet that we've had, so. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff happened. Holy crap. Did I do the psych, uh, the psych test or the psych exam this episode too? Man, this is a good one. All right. Well, check out the next episode. Um, until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.